So um, thank you everybody for coming here out to the Martin E. Siegel Theatre Center at the Graded Center CUNY. My name is Frank Hensch and I'm the director of the Siegel Center and it's really a great pleasure for us to have you all here and uh, to what we think is a very significant and important evening. Um, our center, the Siegel Center Bridges Academia and Professional Theatre, International and American Theatre and uh, we have had many uh, encounters with Latin American Theatre in Chile, Argentina also one evening with Brazilian writers, which we thought was significant and beautiful and such a high quality of work that uh, we encountered here. And we collaborated uh, with Bella and the Ebony Ensemble to put this together. Bella was an intern here uh, for a year, the Next Generation Fellow, and uh, as part of that work, you know, she also created an evening, and this is this one, and it's a great, great honor for us to have uh, uh, Sejinia here from uh, Brazil and Marcia, if you could just uh, Helen Marcia in Sydney. We're all here in, uh, just for this very evening, and uh, Anna Maria couldn't be with us. It looked like for a while she could, but after her novel and everything, it looked less and less likely. But I think we will have her here one day. But it's a great honor she will be here with Skype for us and um, to to share. We um, uh, really think it is significant to hear about diversity of voices, something that reflects also the city where we live in. We feel it's not enough done in the city, but we see on stages 
or here on stages are not all the stories that should be told. So this is a great contribution towards this life, intellectual, cultural, artistic, and theatrical life in New York City. So thank you for everybody uh, to put this together, the Evoe, Evoeos Collective and Isabella and our Siegel team. Thank you um, for coming. The readings will be about 90 minutes, They're like two 30 minutes excerpts, and then three uh, uh, individual monologues from one of the plays. It's all inside here. And there is a reception afterwards uh, at the Archive Bar on 36th Street. It's just around the corner from Pitts to Madison. It's in the program. You can see that and I hope you all will be able um, to join us. And uh, now I would like to all, for you to take out your phone for one second, just check that it's off. I'll do the very same. So you ring off and it, it never rings in our events. It's really, really true. So I'll please do carefully check it. And again, thank you so very, very much, and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Welcome. We are the Evoe Collective a collective of four Brazilian artists living in New York. It is undeniable the popularity of Brazilian culture, yet we experienced a lack of Brazilian productions in New York and decided to come together to bridge this gap. Tonight's reading is the second edition of our first project called Brazil Reads Brazil. This event is the fruit of our need to present female contemporary work and Frank's undying interest in Brazilian theater. Our country is facing an extremely dark political moment, which seems characteristic of the times. Our art is being censored, exhibitions are being shut down, and plays are being canceled. If that wasn't enough, right now Brazil is the country that most kills LGBTQ people in the world the fifth country with the highest number of female homicides, being 70% of them black women. In Sao Paulo, where two of the plays you'll see tonight are set, a woman is publicly raped every 11 hours. So it means so much to us to share this work with you tonight, of these daring and strong women. Tonight you'll be hearing The Body's Night by Marcia Zanelato. The play is a story of a young couple, Clara and Isabel, beautiful, talented, and in love. But the meaning of life is questioned when one of them is diagnosed with a degenerative disease. Diverse, Baena Maria Gonçalves captures the day-to-day -day of a couple, João and Marcia, and their efforts to stray away from the prejudices of a racist and sexist society. And now, to start the night, the reading of God Pregnant, gave birth to horses and learned how to fly without wings by Cidinha da Silva, a play about a daily, the daily routine of six black women who live in the same building. They have no interaction, nor do they know each other. However, their similar yearnings reveal the private truth of a buried affection. Many women live within me. One knows her place in the world, but many times she's oblivious to it. Another grasps everything she can find in front of her. The other has no home. One is suffocating. The other mourning life and yet thirsty to live. A female extremely vulnerable and sad. Sometimes resigned, sometimes revolted, sometimes even happy. <laughs> Wise, determined, strong. A woman deprived of love who loves. Because love is like eye drops and clouds the eyes. Love is water that sprouts and does not cease. It radiates, fertilizes, and blossoms. I 
chose my own name. When my mom died, I went to court and made it official. I was 15. I didn't like the name my mom gave me and I resented her. So I took this opportunity to reinvent myself and became a movie star. Like Darlene Gloria. Her mother's mind was guided by windy dreams and, and that wind blew her to Sao Paulo. She left us, still kids, alone, cradled by the big bad world. When I got sad, I got real sad. When my mom gave us back to my grandmas in Bahia, I used to shower, hoping it would get rid of the sadness, but it wouldn't. There was the sadness my uncle left when he touched us. There was the sadness from poverty, the, the sadness of being yet another pain in the neck at home, the sadness of not having a mother's love. I, I used to climb trees and scream out the pain that was eating me alive. No one would hear me. Hope to leave. Burning water. Roses and bushes were my friends. I, I asked them to carry messages to my mother through the wind and rain. Every time I saw a cloud, I wish the wind blew it to Sao Paulo so that when it rained, it poured on my mother's forehead and, and, and that spotlight hit, making her see our pain. The thing is, I mean, for real, love is sorrow, systematic violence, reality only poured on my mother when I was already nine and had been scarred by the lack of love. I felt someone had tied a knot in that moment of my past that was never untied. And that knot followed me all my life. And it, and it got tighter and tighter after my mother brought us back from my grandma's. My mother had a husband! <laughs> I already knew love hurt, but that's when I learned love was blind, that, that it couldn't feel a child's pain. In Bahia, my uncle, a little older than my sister, molested us, and, and my, my mother's husband raped it. He, he was a big dude. Then I grew up, so no one could fuck with me! Oh, love hurts. Everyone who loves gets fucked up. Or fucked up. I gave to a boy. Well, I wanted a kid to share cake with at birthday parties. Uh, when he was born, he had everything. I begged people to buy me formula on the streets. I wanted the best for him. Bougie food. What I really wanted was for my mother to love me. I never registered my child. I didn't have any of the money, just like my mom. I mean, I change his name every year and, and count him each year by the name I gave him. I think today he looks like this and baptize him. And today he looks like that and baptize him again. <laughs> Till the day I gave him an astronaut's name. One day, 
I was walking the streets with my son. We were begging, crying of hunger. And then a white man who looked so good, he came and, and took us home. I, I wanted to eat. I was pleading for food, at least for my son. But the man said food could wait. My, my baby wouldn't stop crying. So the, so the man smacked him, and he shut up. I, I jumped on him, filled with anger, but then I was the one who got smacked. I got dizzy. And, and he raped in me. I'm not sure if the kids saw it. I, I, I didn't see anything. The knot blinded me. All those memories, my, my uncle, my mother's husband, the white man. I woke up with the boy licking my salty, sweaty face, sucking my apple cheeks. Enjoying the taste of it. The man was sitting there, shining his shoes, saying there was food on the stove that, that me and the boy could eat. We ate the whole thing. The man said he, he only needed to force himself onto me the first time because because the, the smell of a black street bitch just drove him crazy. But he said I could stay. That I would always have food. I could cook and eat. And, and the boy could eat too. And I would be at his disposal whenever he wanted. He'd call and I'd drop everything and go. I mean, I didn't even have to shower every day. He liked the smell of black woman. He, he liked to grab me by the pussy like he used to the dog when he was a boy and didn't have a woman yet. One day, the man was on top of me, on, on the edge of the stove. I, I turned my head to the side and I felt his heavy breathing on my neck while well, well, this thing just hammered me. And a memory clouded me. My grandmother killing pigs. Look into the animal's eyes. Straight into it. So it knows who's the boss. And then on its first slip, <coughs> stab it till it bleeds dead. I looked at that man like I've never looked at any pig. I stared deep into those eyes. I already had the knife. And I remember my grandma saying, you should bleed the pig till death. No pity. So I shoved that knife in his neck with all the strength of my black soul. I didn't even blink. And then I stabbed him in his armpit, searching for his heart, because that's, because they say that's where the love lies. And then I yanked him off of me, just grabbing him by the hair, blood streaming out, his body convulsing. And then I cracked the pressure cooker over his head, and I hit his mouth non-stop till he shut that fucking dirty mouth of his forever! His head was a pasty mix of blood and crap. And then I pulled 
Bunlar. And drove it in his dick so he would never stick that thing in me again. I left it there. My freedom flag. We could get paid for the photos before rent's up. I've already signed up for direct payment. Did I not tell you it was going to pay this month? You can still pay it if you want. That's not what I'm talking about. You're wetting the floor. I'm on the rug. Well, you are wetting the rug that is wetting the floor. I'll buy it later. That commercial money was for her, Marcia. With seven people living at her expense. My mother is 60 years old. His work is a maid for more than You're 40 years. You're wetting the floor. Yes, five in the morning, has to take God knows how many buses, deals with a lot of bullshit, had no food to eat for most of her life. She raised five children on leftover food and hand-me-downs and continues to do so, Marcia. Because if she ever stopped to think about the shitty life she has, she would die. This money is for her. Now, she wants to pay you for somebody else's credit card or cable or buy furniture or school supplies or even pay off someone else's debts. It's, it's a cycle, Joao. I know, but I broke it, didn't I? Maybe someone else will. With you helping out like this? I doubt it. Well, she doesn't. Are you ready to take her place? So that's what you're worried about. No, that's not it. None of them have ever been here before. There isn't going to be a line at the door asking for money. But it is a cycle of dependency, Joao. And after your mother dies... You want dies, my opinion. Th that's exactly what I want. The she thinks I'll take her place. I do it for her, Marcy, and only for her. We have a very similar opinion when it comes to the rest of them. You know that. Let me handle this, okay? examining her hair, touching the roots that are now growing curly since she stopped straining it. Do you think you can get ready in 15 minutes? Joel reappears, wearing only his pants and holding his shirt in his hand. Are you sure you want me to come? I wouldn't have waited until now if I didn't, would I? I've been rehearsing all day, I'm tired. It's totally fine if you want. We already talked about it. I know, but I You'll be more comfortable without me around. I think they don't like me. I'll be in your way. <coughs> if you do not want to go, Joao, just tell me your reason, because you're always pushing that responsibility onto me. But I'm telling you my reasons. Which are? I don't speak English. Brazilians speak Portuguese. But isn't the dinner for that gringo writer? It is. And all of you speak English. It's just a gesture. No one is forced to speak. And, and Andrea seems to always be trying to sit at the part of the table. It's common to separate couples so you can talk to different people. Fine. But I don't feel comfortable being the only one who can't participate in the conversation. I'll tell her to sit you next to me. 
But if it's trying to separate couples, then we'll be drawing attention. The American guy is the star. No one is going to be paying attention to us. We always draw attention, Marcia. And people talk. Has anyone said anything to you? Do they have to? I'll be whatever I say. Everyone stares at Paolo to see his reaction. Paolo won't be there. That's not it. It's been so long. He's with Lucia now. My relationship with him today is the same I have with a friend I've known for 15, 20 years. It's a little more intimate, right? A lot more intimate if you prefer. With enough intimacy to call him out if he thinks about embarrassing you. I knew you did. I didn't say I did. But you did, didn't you? No. All I said is I was bringing someone. To his book lunch. Look, Joao. This has nothing to do with you. This is between me and him. He told me before he introduced me to someone, and I am just doing the same thing. I wonder what you tell people before you introduce me. What everyone says when they introduce a new boyfriend or husband. And why doesn't anyone ask me anything? What do you mean no one asks you anything? Nobody asks me what I do, where I'm from, how we you met. You hardly talk to anyone. That comes naturally in conversation. Nobody goes around I asking that I have a feeling you go stuff. around preparing everyone before they meet me. Look, he's younger. Look, he's black. Look, he comes from a humble family. But he's super intelligent and talented. He'll be big soon. I don't do that. You know anything like that? No. So it's just a lack of interest from your friends. What about yours? How many of them have you introduced me to? Is no one interested in meeting me? My life has changed a lot in the last few years. It's a different time now. Right. So you have no friend left. No one who you knew before wants to know who you're living with now. I don't think you'll like any of them. Well, I think it's something else. What? Do you really want me to say it? You're ashamed. How crazy do you think I'm ashamed of you? So what is it then? I barely see anyone else, Mark. Well, you can call it something else, but you know you feel it. And you know I know you feel it. And you're just saying that because you're ashamed of me too, aren't you? We both know it's more complex than that. But it's there. For different reasons. But it's there. And I don't even think it's shame. Of course it's not. It's more the fear of not being able to prove that we are not what people think we are when they see us together. What if we were? <laughs> right. What if we were? If they only knew how much I enjoy Taking advantage of you. Mm. If we didn't have to leave. And I know you love taking advantage of this part. <laughs> you think you're all that, don't you? Yeah. Do you listen to me if I did? Uh, you tease, and then you think you have the right to complain when people treat you like a sex object. And I do. Why? <coughs> because it's my body, because when I do it, it's different. And is it different, or is it convenient for it's you? It's different. It's convenient. <laughs> I think it's convenient, but, it, it, but it's also different. And how is that? I think I have a right to take advantage of this sometimes when it's convenient. I haven't had much in my favor, Marcia. Do you like what I'm wearing? <laughs> Don't you want to put on a suit? <laughs> <laughs> the intercom rings. Yes. Good evening. Oh, okay. I is he still there? I I let me talk to him. Hi. Do you want to come up? We're about to leave. Okay. We'll talk later then. Send Lucia a kiss. Of course. I'll let him know. Let's talk soon, okay? Bye. <laughs> Oh, he came to drop off a book. Is he coming up? No, I'll pick it up later. I'm 
No, you do not like it, but it looks beautiful. Use this in your favor because you sure know how to take off a suit in public like nobody else. <laughs> you remember, huh? How could I forget? And yet you say you didn't fall for me that night. No. Sure. I didn't. You think I wanted to get in line? It was a very short line, then. I know, but I didn't think that line was for me. And I value a woman that knows her oh, work. Think about what you're gonna say. Can I even be a little bit sexist, just a little bit, just to compliment you? Look at the contradiction of what you just said. Be sexist in order to compliment a woman. Then your comment, you think I wanted to get in line, is also sexist. But I didn't mean to say that I am better than the other women in line. I want every woman to get in whatever line they want as many times as they want. Right. All I just thought was, that line was trouble. <laughs> That's it. Can you still do it? Do I need to answer that? No. These lines, they come and go. And they can come and go again. We have so many stories to tell, you know? We are our stories. I never thought I'd be interested in anyone your age. Interested? In love with. And? Nothing. It's the same. Sorry? Oh, you know what I mean. Love is always the same. The only difference are the fears of whoever's involved. Well, we're past this. The fear? Yeah. You're not even a little bit scared. No. Maybe it comes with time, making us prudent, perhaps. I don't remember being so afraid when I was your age. Soon, I'll be 50. Not soon, you're so dramatic. I'm not being dramatic. Have you ever thought that soon enough you'll be sleeping with a 50-year-old woman? What then? <laughs> The most beautiful 50-year-old woman in the world. Quinquagenarian. Oh. <laughs> you said you didn't mind. And I don't. It's just, I'm afraid. I, I said I wasn't, but I am. Yeah. Say it. Not learning enough. Not knowing enough. <sighs> That's not in our contract. No, I'm serious. Paula was a writer. We come, it didn't work. Don't doubt yourself. I just wanted you to let me help no. you. No. You said that I let my friends do a background check on you before I introduce you, but most of my friends that might be interested in your work don't even know you're an actor. No, 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 no. You know I could have been a soccer player if it wasn't for my father. When he very rarely showed up at my house, I was probably the only one who thought anything good would come of it. Once. When he worked as a massage therapist or as a laundry boy for Corinthians, he took me and Maru, a friend of mine, to try out for the team. I was good, but Maru was way better, and I got in, and he didn't. I went for a couple months, which was probably about the same amount of time it took for my father to disappear again. Maru had stopped talking to me and told everyone the only reason I got in was because my dad knew the guys. I never played soccer again. know if it was because of you or me. You're right. I think I'm more anxious than you to see you get a great gig. It's gonna happen. I know. What? Nothing. How was the audition? Uh, I still haven't heard. Well, what then? Uh, it's not then. You're gonna make me guess all night? Do we have to leave? It's just I'm thinking of my father. <coughs> father. You already know. You have doubts, right? About what? Do I want to be a father? Yes. No, not at all, Marcia. We've already talked so much about this. I know, Joao. I just don't have time. I would give you all the time in the world if I had it, but I don't. You have to 
be sure because it may not be I easy. Know, why not be sure? I know. What if it doesn't happen? I already told you it doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? I don't know, Marcy. You know damn well what I'm talking about. Look at me. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I'll be the happiest man in the world if I have a child with you. But it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is this, me and you. That's what you say now. And if it does happen now, and if you change your mind, it's too late for me. The father I have? The kind of role model I have? You won't be like your father. You won't be like your father. Matya's cell phone rings. It's Paolo. Hi. But are you okay? Of course. Where? I know where it is. We'll go there right now. Paolo was in a car accident and needs help. He doesn't want to scare Lucia. Lights out. <laughs> she gets wet. Whenever she smells the skin of whom she desires, men or women, mm -hmm. she desires people, enjoys the different kinds of pleasure. Yet, things that from women she gets more affection and conversation. Men are not very interested in hearing about her dreams, her plans for professional success, the ambition to expand out of the comfort zone that her family provided her when she was young. She's a winner. She's already opening her third hair salon. And her parents are very proud. They feel all they invested has paid off. Ballet classes, swimming classes, trips abroad, private schools, therapy. When her dad noticed she was beginning to act out, she even did her master's at the European School for Cosmetology in Argentina. <laughs> her mom used to straighten her hair since she was a little girl. She used to say that her daughter was practically white and that straight, her, straight hair suited her better. If I didn't straighten my hair, I couldn't have the ballet bun like all the other girls. So she straightened it. And the rest of the world? The world. Oh, the world shoved in her face the black girl she was, which her white mom stopped her from seeing. My mother appreciated friendship more. That's why she married my father. <laughs> People were against her decision of marrying a black dude, but she wanted. <laughs> she was almost 30 and didn't want to be known as a single aunt. Then my dad showed up. Mm -hmm. All handsome, hardworking, good job. Treated her like a queen. She didn't think twice. Soon enough, they were married. My dad loved my mom so much, he glued a picture of her on the back of his work ID. When he had lunch with the guys, he would always turn that picture towards them. They would always ask, who that? <laughs> That's my woman, he would say. <laughs> hey, motherfucker! <laughs> I wanted to marry my daughter's father, but you know how it goes. The big, juicy, hard cock goes away on that first sleepless midnight fever. Or even sooner, when a woman becomes unbearable due to those pregnancy hormones. He left me alone at night only once. I didn't give him the chance to do it again. Told him to get the fuck out. 
I should have listened when my mom said it was hard finding a good black man like my father. My father was a handyman for Volkswagen for a long time. The money was good. Now he works the night playing samba and shodo. <laughs> the old man had certain concepts he liked to call functional. For example, he liked it when my brother showed up with white chips and didn't like a cousin of mine, our neighbor, his sister's son, who had an afro and dated black girls. He thought it was more presentable to have a haircut like my brother's well trimmed, that way with a short hair, a white girlfriend, the black man was less provocative. After strictly following my mother's guidelines to not hang out with my black classmates, I was still not considered pretty by my white friends. Mm -mm. But since my mom was in denial of who I was, I was too ashamed to tell her about the aggressions I suffered. When there are women, they are white. The majority of them are almost white. I dated this guy who had drug problems. My dad, my dad was against it, but not my mom. She'd say that I should be patient and that with God's help, he'd recover. His family would be so grateful that they would easily accept me. I wouldn't have the same problems my dad had to be accepted into the family. I asked her, what do you mean? I was not only fulfilling my mother's desire of whitening the family, I was almost white. Why would his family have any difficulty in accepting me? That's when my mother used her practical, determined lawyer's stare to say, whites always know who's black. Black folks are the ones who get it confused. Days, weeks, and months went by with a hammering. I stopped straightening my hair when it got really curly, my dad smiled from ear to ear, hugged me, and told me I look beautiful. That day was so bizarre to me. If my dad really thought I was such a beautiful black girl, why did he like white women so much? Why did he marry my mother? Why was he so proud of all the white women he used to date? And why was he so thrilled by all my brother's white girlfriends? As I began uncovering the answers, I started to understand who I was. Now I'm happy. Happy because of my personal achievements and to provide a space of freedom for you, my client, to have whatever hair you desire. Here you can dye, cut, straighten, curl, get your afro picked, get braids, anything you want. That every woman who sits on this chair may feel like she's being treated leaving all her sorrow and pain behind, feeling renewed, ready to fight and reap her blessings. Sometimes when depression hits, when depression takes over, I ask myself, what's the point? 
in having all these hair salons, numerous employees, bills paid, money to travel and dress the way I like, if I don't have someone to love. Seems like men are frightened by my shrink, not attracted to it, at least not for anything more than sex. The women I meet and I'm attracted to are sometimes as sexist as the men. They size up my clothes, and the rest made me. Generally speaking, I think I intimidate people. I put up a shield saying to protect my daughter, but honestly, it's to protect myself. Time has taught me that my life doesn't need to revolve around her, that there is still a woman here, hidden behind the mother, Oh, I want someone who will be my friend. My friend, a partner who protects me, respects my daughter, and walks side by side with me. Who isn't threatened by my success and accept my weaknesses. Because acting is strong all the time. It's tiring. <laughs> I feel that strength creates a barrier for affection to grow. My ideal love is very affectionate, complicit, present, <laughs> open to doing things together, but it's hard. It seems like the only kind of love out there is for show. It's all image and empty inside. So, for now I'm going solo. <laughs> Just me and my bag. Because <laughs> it's better to be alone than in bad company. <laughs> That's why you're here now, so you can comfort her. 
Not to confuse me now. Get out of my mind. You're out of your mind. I wish. I pray you'll never have to see things this clear. Isabel walks in carrying groceries. Love. <coughs> I found the organics. The secret is to get there early. Now we know. Hi, Paula. I'm glad you're here. I bought the greenest greens, so fresh. You can even smell the earth in them. Broccoli, malabar, spinach, so wonderful. The greenest spinach in the world. It's good for your blood. I got these organic gala apples. They're so expensive, but I got them anyways. Fuck it. I'm not going to start saving now. I got our kasha potatoes, the queen of potatoes, like the wealthy cousin of potatoes. And um, red potatoes, and I got eggplants that you love, babe. <coughs> Paula, what happened? Why are you here? Is there any news? Did you find out something new? Clara, what's the suitcase for? You said you didn't need to stay in the hospital. Clara, what's the suitcase for? Did I take too long in the market? Did I take too long? You didn't feel well? I'm gonna get someone who can deliver Isabel? the organics. We need someone to deliver the organics. Isabel. No. Isabel. No, no way. Happiness is cruel. We should be able to forget it as soon as it's over. It's not over. You have to forget. Stop philosophizing, Clara. You're philosophizing. This isn't philosophy. Stop playing around. I don't love you anymore, Isabel. It's been a while, actually. Over two years. I wanted to get rid of you, but I don't know how. So, but now it's time for me. You're too intense. You're too much of a writer for me. Everything for you is. Oh! <laughs> I need lightness. I'm tired of you telling me what to do all the time, following me around all the time and telling me what's best for me, controlling my life. I don't have a life. I want to enjoy my last moments and do whatever I want with what's left. I don't want, I don't want a controlling, excessive woman on top of me all the time that doesn't even have her own life. Go and live your life, Isabel. Go write your books, go take care of your career. I wanna fuck around. Fuck every person I feel like having sex with, everyone. I'm tired of you and of this bubble we live in. You don't need to do this. You don't need to lie. To make up this scene that you're not even good at. Pretend that you're this horrible, despicable person that you will never be. Are you sure? Is this what you want? I want to know, is this what you want? Say it! Be a decent this person at it! This is exactly what I want. Leave. Don't say it! Clara grabs her suitcase and walks to the door. No. No. We'll be together till the end. You two are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you almost killed me. <laughs> The only time that has passed is the time not lived. Time when lived remains extensive, eternal, infinite. The child that I was, I never stopped being. My mom's still here with me. Inside of me, things can happen again simultaneously. Scene four, memo two, the eternal ballerina. It's the beginning of Isabel and Clara's romance, about 13 months before her death. Life before the signs. Hi, Pina Bausch. <laughs> How are you, Pina Bausch? How many times have I told you, Pina Bausch, that your place is guaranteed amongst the world's biggest choreographers and... You should take a 
break some time and have some tea. How do you feel in this very special moment of your life when your wife just got the Mercosur Prize for Best Choreographer in Dance? I feel um, <laughs> exactly how I felt the first moment I met her. Hmm. The happiest woman in the world. And do you get a prize for that? Every day one day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, get a room. Interphone between the floors? Six floors. The biggest hospital in Rio. No interphone. And I need to know if the orthopedist has already taken care of the poor guy in front of me. Do we hospitalize him or not? Do we need surgery or not? Oh, the doctor will only get here at 2 p.m. Everything just seems so difficult for everyone. So, so I come back. 2.30 p.m. Where is the doctor? 3 p.m. No doctor. Are you kidding me? And, and, and this guy is almost dying in front of me, but, but taking selfies. It's the hospital. <laughs> I, ha I had to take his cell phone away. And then, now, imagine me going up and down, up and down, fifth floor, second floor, fifth floor, second floor, checking if the doctor was there. Do you know what time that bastard shows up? 6.30 at night. 6.30 is the afternoon we do. 6.30 is night. 6.30. This is how this country works when it comes to public service. I'm, uh, I'm so stressed. What are you looking at? Are you going to let go of my teacher or not? You know, I should have introduced you both because you are always disrupting my class. <laughs> you know what? I wish I had your life. Isabel, I wish I had your life. The other day she called me because she was feeling anxious. It's like, what happened? You want to know what her big dilemma was? She didn't know. She didn't know if she should end a sentence using spontaneous or instantaneous. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Isabel. Is that a dilemma? <laughs> spontaneous is whatever you do naturally. Uh, ramen noodles are instantaneous. <laughs> Paula, I don't know if you know this, but today is Wednesday. Yes, and I wish it was Friday. I woke up at 5.30 a.m., honey. I've already stitched a thousand people today. This woman with Botox exploding on her face, and an old dude that fell in the shower, and, 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 and this guy, this guy was, was knocked by a car because he was running after a kite. I, I wish you could picture what my life looks like. My love, your class is on Thursday. You two are perfect characters. I, mean, I don't even need to write anything. I'm so sorry. Do you want to dance? No, it's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Dancing doesn't do you. Nothing will. <coughs> I'm leaving. Paul, can I get you some tea? Do you want to smoke a joint? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They finish. Great. Let's do it one more time. Okay. They start again. <laughs> With music now. The music starts playing. They start again. Clara doesn't finish the movements with the same beauty she did before. Her movements seem to get a bit more rigid. Paola notices her. Do you need a break? What happened? I don't know. You're working too hard. Yep, working hard is my middle name. You're hurting yourself. What's wrong? Cramps? Damn it. You know, you need to eat bananas to load up on the time. And you want to teach me that? Ah! Clara, sit down. Th let me help you. I'm ah, fine, sit really? Sit down! 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds. One week, seven days. 10,080 minutes, 604,800 seconds, 30 days, 302,400 minutes, 2,592,000 seconds. 
I don't have time. You know, you should take that more seriously. I'm rehearsing in the afternoons, teaching in the mornings, and directing the night. Fuck that. Fuck that. Seriously. Yeah. that nothing is more important than your health, Christ. And that your fucking health is the only thing that you fucking yeah. have. You just say that and I actually suck. Right, I'm not your mother. And I'm not a child either. Right, you're not a child, so I need to keep telling you that you don't seem healthy I at all. I am healthy. Your health is kind of fucked up. My fucking health is doing so fucking okay. Your fucking health is fucked up, and you're the only one pretending not to see what's going on. Have you gone and fucked yourself up today? Not yet, unfortunately. Then please do so. <laughs> Hi, Takla. <laughs> Scene 8. The sky turns dark at noon. Fala's office. Three months after the first sentence. Fala with a name badge and a stethoscope. So nice remembering that. That was the first time I smoked a joint in my life. First and last, what, a, what an awful thing we did. My blood pressure went down and... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's the energy surrounding drug trafficking. <laughs> I, I love <laughs> the bursts of mysticism. In, in your book, is it going well? <sighs> kind of. Supporting character decided to become the lead. Can you believe it? A character full of vanity, it's a mess. And the baby. Are you still trying the baby? Of course. You believe in God, don't you? What's going on, Paula? The book, God, Children in a Row, what are you trying to say? Is, did you find out something? Is there something wrong? Are there any new tests we should be doing? Yes, yes, new yes, there is something. We still have to investigate. However, there is a possible diagnosis for Clara that is no piece of cake here. Well, Tell me, what is it? Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. ALS. That's impossible. Are you sure? No, I'm not even sure I'm alive. <sighs> well, how did you well how did you get well, to you that? Calm down, okay? I called in here so we can talk for a bit. If <laughs> things keep going in this direction, you have to be strong. All of the tests were negative. I know. That's the problem. One of the signs of ALS is that you can't confirm any other diagnosis. It's a very mysterious thing. That's impossible. Tell me it's not true. I wish I could. Well, if you wish it, then say it. I can't let you, Isabel. I'm a doctor. Patients love lies. Pa patients' partners love lies, but then it's the doctor's fault. Do you need a lie? Just a small little lie so you can cope with it. <laughs> yes. It's a flu. Scene 11, Memo 3, Trauma is a Moment that Repeats Ad Eterna. Fragments of Clara's memory. Clara now uses a walking stick. One of her arms is hanging, rigid, without movement. Explain it to me again. The neurons stopped communicating. I did this. We stopped communicating. What? Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS. I would say A, Clara understood B. I would say B, Clara understood A. It's wrong. There's something wrong, look at me. I'm good, I'm great, fuck this. The brain can't perform movement commands. I, I wanted to control everything. She was suffocating. The body stops. I did this to her. The, the, the mind is stays intact. That's completely a joke. Safe. Why me? And, and genetically predisposed people, the excess of glutamate. My God, they're killing us by the mouth. Very frequent in athletes and dancers. Don't exaggerate, baby. You, you exaggerate, it's okay? It's the pesticides. I, huh, the pesticides. Damn pesticides! Until when, my God? Patients like Stephen Hawking. The physicist? The physicist. Fuck! Fuck, fuck, fuck! Hope. He, he'll find the cure. He found the origin of the universe. He'll find the cure. But there was a huge campaign, the, the Ice Bucket Challenge. We, we donated to... We we donated to the campaign, love. Why did you want to donate to the campaign? Did I know? You're gonna have to be strong. I Isabel, write, write, write a book about all of that. Literature will save you. Oh my God. I'm gonna become a, a
box of memories, a photo album of... No. No, you won't. You won't. Our love is gonna save you. Paula, we have plans, okay? We have so many plans. Love. Let's have our baby. Let's, let's try again. What? You're right. I... Uh, oh my... In it. Try to calm down, okay? Breathe. Clara's speech becomes distorted. Yes. I, uh, I feel happy. Clara, are you feeling something? Oh, I'm beautiful. Try to speak slowly. I'm beautiful. I'm going to call an ambulance. I want you to find that for you. I'm not getting one thing. Scene 12, memo 4, the book of regrets. Clara and Isabel are home, months after their first symptoms and before the diagnosis is confirmed. In Clara's memory, the desire to relive life. I won't say that I wish it could begin again, but I do. I wish I could rewrite the book of regrets. I could do it better, no doubt. I just didn't know. I do it better every time I remember. The problem is, that it only happens inside of me. I told you you needed to protect yourself. Shut up. It's not me, it's not you. We chose something really hard. You don't believe in it. Deep down, you don't believe Maybe in it. Maybe not. That never kept me from fulfilling your desire. My desire. Our desire. I don't need you in order to be a mother. You don't need me for anything. Is that really what you're going to say to me? You're gonna say, you're not gonna say, yes, I need you. You're the mother of my child, who else? Isabel, you talk as if life was gonna end tomorrow. Relax. We're young, we have all the time in the world. Says who? Will you or will you not be the mother of my child? I will be whatever you want me to. I just never thought about being a mother. It was never my dream. There's seven billion people in the world. Why add another? Do you want it to be over after you? You're the end line. You're the grand finale. You're the best. You want to fight? You need it. Okay. Insult me, Isabel, as many times as you'd like. That's what I'm here for. No, that's not what you're here for. Go away. Don't talk like that. Go away. You have no idea what you're saying, Isabel. Control yourself. I'll wait. Get out of here. I don't want you in my life. You're selfish. I despise you. You're vain. You're manipulative. I hate you. The scene begins again. Clara changes it in her mind. I told you you needed to protect yourself. Shut up. It's not me. It's not you. We chose something really hard. Deep down, you don't believe in it. Deep down, you don't believe in it. Maybe not. But that never kept me from fulfilling your desire. My desire. Our desire. I don't need you in order to be a mother. Don't be unfair with me, Isabel. I'm with you. I want to have this baby <coughs> with you. I love you. And I'm not gonna let your I'm not gonna let you be unfair with me because this will pass. Your anger will pass and we'll still be together. It won't pass. Soon enough, you'll be sick and our chances will be over. Shit. The scene restarts. Clara changes it in her mind again. I told you you needed to protect yourself. Shut up. It's not me. It's not you. We chose something really hard. You don't believe in it. Deep down, you don't believe in it. I've always believed in it. So much that we're here. This treatment costed a fortune and we're here. Cost a fortune. You're going to talk to me about money right now. Shit. <laughs> the scene restarts in a new attempt of Clara's to restore the past. I told you you needed to protect yourself. Shut up. I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna buy a cigarette, and I'll be right back. You don't smoke! Shit! <laughs> <laughs> the scene restarts one more time. I told you you needed to protect yourself. Shut up. Shut up doesn't go up. The scene restarts. <laughs> Scene 13, complete and utter impotence, <coughs> right after the diagnosis.
I promise you with all my heart. I'll never walk in heels again, ever. I'll never wear lipstick again. No, not lipstick. <laughs> she loves it when I wear lipstick. I, I can't promise that. I'll never wear any sort of makeup that isn't lipstick, I promise. I'll go up the stairs at St. Pingus Church. I'll go all the way up. I'll let my hair grow and donate it to kids with cancer every year for the rest of my life, I promise. I'll forgive my father. I'll find a way, I swear. I'll forgive that asshole. You don't like it when I call him that, right? Asshole? He was an asshole, but you don't like it when I say that, right? I'll forgive him. This isn't you fucking me over because I haven't forgiven him, right? No. God would never be vengeful. It's not because we're lesbians either, right? <laughs> no. God's not a bishop. <sighs> I promise you, I'll, I promise you anything. I'll give all my money. I'll give all my money to people in need. I, I don't have that much, but I'll, I'll give it. I'll cancel my trip to Italy, my Italian classes. I'll donate it. I'll write a book about this disease. It's gonna help a lot of people, I swear. That's easy. You can't, can't swear on easy things. I'll do a campaign for the government to release funding for this disease. I'll go through with this, I promise. What else? What else do I have that is worth anything to you? Fuck! What can I possibly give to the man that has everything? That created everything? This fucked up shit, you son of a bitch! No. I don't like insulting females, bitch is not an insult. You're a son of a politician. <laughs> a politician. No, I don't like insulting sons either. You're a colonel. You're a colonel, a stupid fucking colonel. You leave the bad ones here, don't you think I know this? Leave the bad ones here, they steal, they kill. They're evil and you leave them here. And my wife, my wife is the best person in the world. She is good, she is kind, she is generous, she is smart, she is talented. <laughs> she has to survive. She has to stay. She has to stay on planet Earth because she has so many things to do. You don't know the beauty of the things she has to do here on Earth. I demand you take this back. Don't you dare take Clara away from me. You don't want to mess with me? You don't want to mess with me? You don't know what I'm capable of. For the love of God, your love, selfish. You, you don't think about us. You, you don't think about what you've done. Take a good look at what you've done. Two kids sleeping on the sidewalk, 30 meters away, a woman sleeping on the sidewalk. And look what you did. Look at that Azealia. Look at the amount of perverse people stealing from the elders. Stealing from the poor to buy yachts. To buy fucking yachts. And you don't do anything. You don't throw a comet. You don't cause an earthquake. And you want to take my wife. The meaning of my life. Are you fucking kidding me? You can't do this. You're the man. You've done it. 
all. You can't be this mistaken. Please. You can't. You can't. You cannot. You can't. You can't. You cannot. You can't. Scene 14, inventory. Now, we are inside Clara's consciousness, little before her death. You were right. You were always right. But this time, you were so right, my love. My darling, Isabel. We spend our entire lives not knowing that the only thing that we really have is time. Nothing else. It's been three months here, inside of this room. I miss the sun. I almost went to Patagonia to see the Aurora Borealis. Almost took scuba diving lessons. I should have had sex with you every day during these years. Should have slept naked next to you every day during these years. Should have insisted in you and in this baby. I was scared. Instead of making excuses, why didn't you travel last year? You're sleeping with my doctor, aren't you? You should marry her. And I shouldn't be jealous of you. Who cares if you had sex with somebody else or not? Life is so much more than that. No, that's a lie. It burns my stomach to know that I will die and you will get married to my doctor. I cannot, under any circumstance, see your bed. You have to move houses after I die. And never let the address slip out of your mouth when you pray for me. Always pray for me around nature, okay? So even though I hear your prayers, I don't see your house. Will you donate all my books to my dancers? They'll be so happy. They'll think you're great. I should have written dedication saying, but another thing I didn't think of doing. Will you throw my ashes in the ocean? You think of it, right? My love, I need to forgive your father. From here, I'm forgiving everybody. I think I'll have enough time. And you have to keep fighting and going to the protests, and you cannot fall for the, oh, she's dead, I should know. Not a single right left. And put lipstick on, always. I want you beautiful, always, so everybody can look at you and say, wow. What a beautiful woman Clara had. Oh, life. Thank you for giving me this love. I could have lived 80 years, but if I hadn't lived this love, it would have been worse than dying at 32. Scene 16, Palace of Memories, Heartbeat Sound. My love. I don't have anything left. But it's not true that I don't have anything left. I learned that. I don't have anything. But it's not true that I don't have anything. <coughs> My mother's face, when I, while I'm in your chest, looks like a Bergman close-up. While playing hide and seek, I hide under the piano. It seems like the entire state building looked from below, from the sidewalk. Love is beautiful, you know? I had forgotten how it feels to be under. Under the table, we overhear the grown-ups talk and are still protected. The table is the kid's very own trench. I miss the apple in the palm of my hand. I miss sinking my teeth in it and feeling the juice run down. The roses I smelled at the Yellow Hamburg Garden, they're miraculous remain with me. Can you believe it? 
You can also feel the sea circumventing my skin at the Lapis Mendes beach. If I think about it too hard, the Lapis Mendes beach still burns my retina. I have to remember wearing sunglasses. I can still feel my sister's hands when we were little and stared at the sky looking for the three sisters. It was a chubby hand. I feel it. I feel it too well. My body is an infinite map of unbreakable memories. When I walk the streets of Saada looking for a carnival costume, I didn't know it was a palace of memories that the man that the man who would stumble upon me carrying a card of ice was also a palace of memories. And then when I made love to you, we were two palaces of memories. And that's why I love you and your dad and your brothers and all of your ancestors. I didn't know. This complete resting state showed me more of my body my cells, my memories, and all of these years dancing in front of a mirror. There's a redness on my back. It's from a beating my dad gave me from flip-flops. On my back, there's a scared scratch that still stains from the zipper of my 16th birthday dress. <coughs> the lady screaming in the night, <coughs> the lady the coroner, the great lady I still hear. My mom crying at the saint's feet I still hear. Your moan, the forced orgasm I gave you I still hear. On my body, everything that has happened, it's still happening. My mother breasts still escapes from my mouth while I sleep in her warm lap, and the milk drips off my chin. <coughs> the heartbeat sound becomes linear. End of play. to an end. Our artwork under construction now cease. We wipe off our makeup, our costumes, our rehearsed intentions. The text rests, the body takes a breath, and we go back home. Each one of us holding on to our own past. We use the stage in self-defense. We bargain for a slice of the cake of this world, serving at the table our hushed pains and turning our flesh into a tool for change. Thank you for um, coming to it. And just uh, in a moment, we will um, start with a little panel with the playwrights and the directors and part of the group. 
So thank you for coming and staying. And uh, that was that was a great, great presentation. I think really amazing. Michael, do we have Anna Maria with us? Is he, do we have a Skype connection? Okay, we are calling. So, um, hello to uh, Anna Maria. Hello, can you hear us? Yes, I'm hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are in uh, Sao Paulo or uh, in right now? Yeah, I'm here in Sao Paulo. Yeah, I'm in Sao Paulo. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there with you. Um, but I, I love hearing you. <laughs> Wonderful. So were you able to see the, uh, the reading? Did you hear? Were you able to hear the reading? Did you, could you follow it on live stream? Yes, I, I, could, I could listen to all the readings. And I'd like to, first of all, uh, thank you and congratulation all the actors that did a great job. Thank you very much. Yeah, I see <laughs> Um, we soon come to all of you, but um, um, Anna Maria, what comes to your mind when you hear that uh, that collection of, of readings here in New York? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear very well. Yeah, what comes to your mind when you when you saw the readings and heard the readings? What were you thinking? What? <laughs> Thank you, and thank you again for taking the time and, and stay with us. But maybe the same question to the um, two other um, uh, uh, playwrights, uh, see Ginger and, um, and Marcia, well, how, how does it feel like hearing this, um, this work here in New York? Um, I feel myself very well. <laughs> 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 But I, I cry, I cry, I, I really cry with you girls. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chia, James. Thank you, girls. Thank you, Frank. You, we, we are all lucky guys because we have Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, it's, it's an honor to have you uh, here. I, I, I'm I, in this hard time as we don't know uh, very well in we can... Uh, what we can believe in. I believe in the God of meetings. And I think the God of meetings uh, lives here at Seagull Center, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, you all, you all here uh, tonight. Boa noite. Good evening. Vou falar em português, que é mais confortável para vocês para ouvirem também. I'll be speaking in English. It's a little more comfortable. And sorry, I'll be speaking in English. She will be speaking in Portuguese. Um, 
excuse me, translator hat. Um, and it's a little more comfortable for her. Yeah, and for you. And for me. <laughs> for them. For, for, for you. For them to, to listen to. É, eu, desde o começo, bom, obrigada, obrigada, meninas. Thank you to everyone. É, desde o começo, eu tinha uma expectativa muito boa de ouvir é, o texto em outra língua. From the beginning, I always had um, great expectations to hear the text in another language. E essas expectativas foram atendidas porque os, as partes que foram escolhidas because these expectations were met because the parts that were chosen elas têm muito vigor, elas são muito impactantes e acho que podem ser reconhecidas em toda a diáspora africana. They are very vigorous, can I say that? And uh, impacting and they have a strong uh, uh, strong elas tem, tem impacto, são, são vigorosas. They're very vigorous in the um, African diaspora. Thank you. So, um, to, to the director, um, uh, how did you put all this together? What, <laughs> how did you organize, orchestrate it, and what do you feel by, about this place? I mean, I think for the, the most part, um, I, I just did, I, I did a lot of listening. And I, I am not Brazilian. I've never been to Brazil. And to just hear, hear the stories and then um, the cast and, and these, these women, just really taking my cue from them. So seeing what was important to them and how they felt. And I mean, quite honestly, it's a wonderful uh, opportunity for me to learn and grow. And so I feel honored that I was asked to do it. So I think our process was really as organic as it can be, open conversations and just listening, seeing what's important, what's there, what's, what's the story. Yeah, it really did feel you worked really hard. A lot of love and work uh, went into these readings. I think we all could, could sense that. It feels, and also the urgency that it came with it. And we heard about love and death. We heard about rape, uh, poverty, about race relations. Uh, about the role of women. So um, maybe a question um, also again to the players and we come also to the actors. So uh, maybe start with Ana Maria. What are these plays make Brazilian? Are these Brazilian plays? Are they something specific Brazilian in these excerpts we heard tonight? Or do you think they're more universal? So, uh, uh, are these, yeah, these, these plays, do you feel... Um, the, the, what makes these plays Brazilian? What, what, what makes them specifically Brazilian? Uh, I think that uh, what makes us um, make something more local is that something that makes it more universal to me. Uh, I think we can happen to have uh, people uh, like the, the characters we have in these plays and um, this, this strong woman like Cidinha and, 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 and like this, this women that are writing here and everywhere. I think we are talking about uh, universal problems. I think we are talking about um, problems that we have here, but also can be shared with these, a lot of women all around the world. And, this makes us um, talking about local uh, global solutions or local possibilities, but also sharing this with the universe and sharing this in a way that only our experience, like uh, a woman living in this place of the world where we live, can do it. Um, I don't know if, if you have something very specific. But I think we can we have some things that can be shared with a lot of women anywhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe the question also to to our Brazilian um, the, the actors again. Thank you for all the work you put in, and them thinking was shining through like a crystal, something very clear and light. As someone said, like poetry should be clear like a cr icicle and light like a bird's foot, and at the same time, and um, it was. But 
Is that something a Brazilian quality? You all live here, I think, in New York, and uh, the, these are messages from your country and written also by women. So what, what is, how did that feel to you all? Just for me, just so funny because when I read their work, it was just, I could see this place and this text being done here in New York, and I could see that people would, uh, uh, I don't know, feel this story and connect to this story like very easily. So yeah, they are plays placed in Brazil, they are written by Brazilian uh, uh, playwrights, but it's just, yeah, it's like uh, Ana Maria said, it's, it's universal. Uh, uh, this drama and this pain and this struggle. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. I agree. I think um, it's it's universal. Like, and and I, I think us we have this as an objective mm -hmm. to 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 bridge this and to show and to translate and to you know um, share this place that everyone in this room can relate to. It's not, um, it's not, of course, you know, it's made in Brazil and it comes from Brazilian people and there is a certain degree of- I think of like the, the things that are made in Brazil, made in a Brazilian place, like when he talks about the soccer team, you know, that like the, but like the core of the story, it can be American and it can be- Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally, it's true. No, oh. I was just gonna say that I think the like few, she would mention the Saint Peña's Church. Like a few things that are very local to Brazil, and the Brazilians were, are very f like familiar with. And I think the international audiences would maybe be like, "What is this?" But aside from that, I think the exactly the core is human, and that's everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and and that's important to say as well that uh, the universal does not does not exist ex itself by itself. It's, an, it's, it's a construction all the time. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, maybe a couple of words to the plays themselves, maybe to the playwrights. We started with you, you, and then Anna Maria. Why did you write that specific play, and what was the idea behind it? Tell us a bit more about the idea of the play and um, your intention with it. Okay. Uh, maybe I can answer the... the the other questions. <laughs> uh, Universal <because> question. <laughs> <laughs> because to me now, it's very important to put on the scene two lesbian, uh, two girls in love. Because we have, in, the, in this time uh, at Brazil, um, uh, developing development of the funda fundamentalism religious uh, who, who, who are uh, LGBT um, persons are fighting uh, uh, fighting against them. Against the LGBTQ them. community. Uh, is so fighting. in this time, this is the uh, Brazilian play because Brazil is LGBT country. <laughs> <laughs> and get out, Michel Temer! Get out, Marcelo Crivella! Get out, Bigfoot! Um. Right now she's stating the name of the president and a few politicians. <laughs> Maybe about uh, also uh, yeah about the play yeah. Vou falar em português. <laughs> é, no 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 caso é, dessa peça engravidei e parei cavalos e aprendi a voar sem asas. Nós trabalhamos com 55 entrevistas a diferentes mulheres negras. For my play, for Sujinha's play, um, got pregnant, gave birth to horses, and learned how to fly without wings, is um, they interviewed 50, 55 different women. Different black women. Different black women. E essas mulheres atuavam em várias áreas profissionais que costumam concentrar mulheres negras. These women uh, lived and worked in areas that were concentrated with, uh, as a black community and black women. Então, trabalhamos com mulheres, entrevistamos mulheres que atuavam em salões de beleza, em escolas de samba. We interviewed women that worked in hair salons, in um, samba schools, yeah. arenas. Uh, moradoras, mulheres em situação de rua, mulheres uh, presidiárias, women who were incarcerated, women who were homeless. E a partir dessas entrevistas 
que foram feitas pelo, pelo grupo que encenou a peça, o grupo Os Crespos, a Companhia Os Crespos, nós construímos os arquétipos dessas seis personagens. And from these interviews, and the interviews were conducted by Os Crespos, who then uh, they uh, did the first production of the play. Um, they, in, they, from these interviews, <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> From these interviews, uh, the six different archetypes of six different characters were created. Yes. yes. Um, thank you. And um, uh, Ana Maria, your play Diverse, also as a, even it was like a tiny, very personal, intimate play, it was the hologram almost of a society. And I think almost you switched like the men and female role. So, but tell us a bit about that play. Is that a, how personal or universal is it? Yes, it's uh, a play where uh, I, I would like to talk about the possible relationships. Uh, what you have seen is the, the first act of it. It has two more acts, and we have more uh, characters. That we have some more couples, and we have interracial couple, uh, an older woman and a younger man, uh, a couple of lesbians. And I would like to to put them to talk. I think in this uh, all around the world, uh, we need to talk. We need to, to learn how to talk. We have to be in, relating ourselves through uh, internet, through social media. And I like uh, we are losing a very important um, human characteristic that is to talk. Uh, looking into our own faces and talking about our feelings and being true to ourselves and to the people who are relating to us and not trying to, to look for the, the perfect relation but the possible relation. Let's see we can, what we can do with what we have. Um, I think that's it. I, I would like to only to, to, to make people talk to each other about what they are feeling, about what they are living, what is the, the possible and not only the perfect life they can live and proportionate to the others. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, before we come also to um, audience question, maybe one question, I mean, we heard there a bit. How, the, the current political situation in Brazil, how, how, what stamp does it put on your uh, work, what you create on your the atmosphere and feeling uh, of, uh, uh, of um, uh, working in Brazil or being here, but here and all those, to, to all of you, what, how, does it, how, how does it connect the art and politics, personal life, professional life? That's a very... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just feel like as a Brazilian artist living in New York, to see what's happening in Brazil, for me, it's very uh, frustrating in the sense that I feel that I cannot do anything from here. You know, we, we, we wanna like do something. So for us like to find this place and to come up with this collective, uh, it is our way to, to yeah, to, to, to try to, to communicate these stories and to give voices, not give voices, just like, like serve as a as a as a vessel. <laughs> yes, for like this 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 work and, and I don't know. It's just and for us, I don't know, for like as actors as well, like as Brazilian actors living in New York, we have this feeling that we need to create our own opportunities. Otherwise we are gonna be the maid or we are gonna be whatever, the whore, thank you. So, and for us, it's, it's just like very important for us to create our opportunities. Eu penso que é, é muito importante nesse momento uh, que a arte esteja atenta e, de alguma forma, a, di dialogue com a situação política que nós estamos vivendo no país. É muito importante para mim que a arte esteja consciente e pode dialogar e pode ter um diálogo com a política e a situação que nós estamos vivendo no nosso país agora. Num processo em que o, várias situações uh, fascistas têm se instalado, 
não é possível que a arte é, se posicione como algo alheio a isso. É preciso enfrentar isso, enfrentar com coragem e com vigor. With all of the fascist um, happenings that are going on in our country, it, art has become. Um, not have a dialogue and not answer to that and not try to like uh, 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 fight against it. Yeah. <laughs> eu, eu acho que todo vou falar em português também. Eu acho que todo autor, né, todo escritor, ele está respondendo ao seu mundo e ao seu tempo, né? Não só ao seu país, né? I think that every author is writing and responding to their country, but what's going on around them. I think that evident that this wave of conservatism and these diverse forms of totalitarianism that are emerging are emerging in the world entire. It's very clear that these kinds of conservatism, this wave of conservatism, and this um, totalitarian, totalitarian that is going on in the world um, is not just happening in Brazil. E nós artistas, nós somos o oposto do totalitarismo, né? O que o totalitarismo quer é justamente que nós não tenhamos singularidade, algum, algumas ideias que são puramente de artistas como liberdade, liberdade de expressão são os grandes inimigos dos, dos líderes totalitaristas, né? Um, us artists are the opposite of totalitarianism. That is what impedes us from doing our work and we fight against it. And quando você parou, hoje ela parou. Yeah. Um, maybe another a yeah, question. Yeah. Acho que a gente acaba criando toda a estética que a gente cria é uma estética de resistência. The aesthetics we create end up creating is the aesthetics of resistance. Thank you. Um, Tia, do you think those plays could be staged in New York? Would there be an audience? Uh, would actors come? What, what is your feeling? Yeah, I, th I think definitely. And I think, you know, part of what we've been talking about before is that these pieces, the stories, um, them being universal, them being things that we all can uh, connect to. So. There's not much new under the sun. And I think that it's a beautiful way um, when uh, given the opportunity to uh, invest in, in someone else's culture, in someone else's story, and then realizing that, oh, that's my story too. So I think not only could they be done, they should be done. Um, so then, It'll and then done. of course that, <laughs> right? And, we, and doing those kinds of stories, I think opens us up to um, the investment, to invest in someone else's story, I think just breaks our own limitations and our barriers of, oh, it's just me, it's all about me, or my family, my family's history. No, it's how we're all actually the same, that, that, that I think, that I think is the thing that we need to realize in order to love each other better. So not just advocating for myself and my story, but seeing someone else's will push me, force me, help me, um, grow me in helping someone else tell their story. And those stories were told so beautifully, so beautifully written. I think uh, it's a, these are great artists, the writers. You know, of, people always go on and on how great it is to do a touchdown, but write a play, you know, or do, write a really good play. And that's how hard that is. And I think the high quality of uh, these plays that are coming out from Brazil today and also in our other uh, Brazil evening, which we did um, with the uh, other Marcia, um, they just show that there is, you know, an incredible uh, energy and creativity and we, we do not know enough. But uh, maybe, Michael, if we can put out a bit more light up for the audience, and um, we, we, we are proud of our audience. We have a great audience, and I hope we didn't talk too much. But we really would also like to hear from you, and uh, Amanda will go around with the microphone. Not only that we uh, hear you better, but also we, really, we do record it, and it's live streamed to Sao Paulo. So, um, uh, so you can also hear what we say. So maybe say, very shortly, who you are, one sentence, and then um, a, a question to the audience, to the whoever you feel right. So, is there a question, or it could be a comment? You know. So. 
Hi, I'm Patricia. I'm a friend of Marcia's. Um, one of the things I kept thinking about from our Brazilian culture is uh, Brazilian television. We have, you know, uh, how Brazilian television still dominates sort of popular Brazilian culture, telenovelas, and the depiction of different peoples, of different classes, of different races. There's so many stereotypes still to this day. And what I kept thinking about was how honest and true these plays were, totally the opposite of what we see over and over and over again in Brazilian television. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Thank you. True, that's true. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Another comment or question? Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Cameron. Um, I'm actually going to school over at uh, Heaney's Applied Theater Program, so this was like, oh, this is really fascinating to me. Um, but as a black American woman, I think it was really interesting um, in the homeless woman and the hair salon owner in particular, this idea of uh, blackness and love, but particularly as it relates to like a social trauma, like where in the other ones I feel like it was very personal, where I think the rejection that was coming in those stories seemed, well, this is like my interpretation was very, uh, socially driven. So I don't know if that's something that you would like to talk about or speak about or if that's just my own interpretation of it. Can you just like make it a little bit clear if you have like a question on that because I got your comment but okay, um, you rephrase the question. Yeah. <laughs> or not even if it's a question but um, like a prediction. Like I guess maybe like the valid validity of that. Like do you think that's a more of a social drama or is it more personal or how do those relate or talk to each other. Uh, bem, a ideia, a intenção foi uh, refletir esse trauma social. The idea was to reflect this uh, social trauma. Uh, com, como eu disse, a gente trabalhou com 55 mulheres, com depoimentos de 55 mulheres, e a partir desses depoimentos construímos essas seis personagens. Um, as I said before, we uh, interviewed 55 women, and, and from their interviews, we um, created this, this, this piece based on six of them. Então, cada personagem é um arquétipo De, de situações, de histórias, de vivências, de grupos entre essas 55. So each one of these six is an archetype of of a group of women who were um, had similar stories and were in similar situations. I just want to say something as a uh, the actress. Uh, when I read these monologues, I feel that every black woman can find herself in this play because there's like six characters and because there's like all this research. And when I read uh, The Hair Salon Honor, um, I saw my story. My mom is white, my dad is black, and all this, uh, it wasn't that, oh, that happened to me, but that pain happened to me. You know, so I think it's very easy for any black woman to see uh, herself on, in this play. Some other over here, yeah. Hi, I'm Noemi. I studied with three of these beautiful ladies, <laughs> and I just wanted to say thank you. And me as an actress and artist as well, it's like it's such a great inspiration. And I'm so proud of you. Aww. And I was very moved and I think it's amazing work and I'm very interested in reading more. And I would love to read all the plays. Just wanted to say thank you, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, the question to also to Anna Maria. Um, I know you also write uh, novels, you write essays. Um, what does it mean for you to write a theater play? What's the difference, or what, did, what do you do in theater, what you don't do in other forms? Why do you think this should be a play? Well, um, what, um, I'm, I'm very, I have to be very visual to write, to 
okay? Uh, even writing a novel, I have to see the scene that I'm, I'm trying to, trans to, to put in the paper. So uh, I think that uh, I, I'll always say that writing to, to theater is like it, writing in 3D. Uh, um, I, I see it different. And I always, I think we have to be more general because um, even if a novel isn't ours anymore, when you give it, uh, when you publish it, and everyone who reads it owns it in, in, in its own way, a play, I think, has to be more general, and you have to give the, the space so that the director and the, the actors and everybody who will work on it give its own interpretation and make it um, of her or of his own, really own, okay? It's not mine anymore. I think that I'm, I'm just some kind of uh, um, a break hole that the, the story passes through and, and it really goes away. It's, it's a very interesting way to, to tell a story through any other else and not me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Some other comments or questions over there? Uh, Let's just I wait the microphone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and use your I stage voice. <laughs> Hello? I mean, again, I just wanted to say thank you so much. And at some point, I, even though you, know, you come from Brazil and that's your inspiration, I, I, I kind of forgot that it was about Brazil because <laughs> it talks to so many cultures. You know, from the, um, oh my God, from you, you know, like the women, like men feeling uh, uh, intimidated by successful women. That talks to so many cultures. By uh, having frustration at uh, public hospitals. That happens in so many countries, you know? <laughs> um, the struggle of uh, relationships because of disease. It happens to like all of us and and I just, yeah, it was very touching and like, I really connected mm -hmm. to all that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rape, abuse, yeah, it, it really comes, happens everywhere. And it was beautiful to see it. Thank you, thank you guys. <laughs> the, the motorcycles, right? On the, yeah, that's on the Sao Paulo. Of Sao Paulo. There's so many yeah. motorcycles. In Auto boys. <laughs> Hello, sorry, I'm almost out of voice, but um, firstly, fora <laughs> um, Secondly, I would love to congratulate girls. Oh, that's beautiful. I've been like following the work. Um, congratulations to the, the writers and to the Seagull for bringing it all. I have two questions actually. One for the, the ladies, for Evoe. So, what's next? Oh my God, no. <laughs> we need so a break. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send the two questions. And the other ones for the, the playwright. Um, uh, so, how the play was received in Brazil since they touch a very um, sensitive subject, except especially now, if uh, you had some sort of retaliation of, of some sort? Um, just say like how the plays were received in Brazil. Yeah, maybe we start with the plays. Yeah. Just, I just want to make uh, clear that diverse. They didn't have like a production in Brazil, so yeah, just was a premiere reading. To yeah, them? this is yeah. Oh wow, this was a world, <laughs> a world Siegel premiere Center. reading uh, at the Siegel Center. So, uh, wow, yeah. Então, vou responder. É, a, a gente tem... Eu tenho até um, um special thanks to, do, to my friend Paulo Verlins, uh, who is directed, uh, é o diretor da montagem no Brasil, e foi ele quem, quem me convidou para escrever sobre esse tema, é, ou ela. Um, I have a special thanks to do to the director of the play who actually invited um, Marcia to write this play. Uh, no, a gente teve uma primeira temporada no Centro Cultural Banco do Brasil, no Rio, 
que é o, o, o centro cultural mais popular da cidade, atende todas as classes sociais. Né? The first uh, production was at a cultural center in Rio that is um, open to um, every accessible to blind. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. people from it's all not around a, Rio. Yeah. And, uh, e, uh, e lá a gente teve uma, uma experiência muito boa que foi ver a, aquelas velhinhas que frequentam os teatros é, e chorando e se emocionando é, com uma, uma história de amor de duas lésbicas. We had the um, incredible opportunity to see um, old women who uh, frequent these community centers crying um, when they saw two lesbian women on stage. O, o que é muito diferente para gente porque não é uma uma peça é, com propósito LGBT. É, ao contrário, né? The play is it's very important. It's it's very shocking for us to see that because the purpose of the play necessarily isn't um, LGBTQ rights, but it's actually the opposite. Yeah. E aí a gente acaba conversando com, com pessoas que, que poderiam ser cooptadas por um preconceito né, fundamentalista contra os LGBTs, é, criando uma empatia, entendeu? mostrando que as pessoa, uma pessoa lésbica é, ela vive e ama como qualquer outra. We end up having a conversation with people who otherwise would not want to be exposed to these um, plays and end up having a conversation with people who have preconceived um, ideas of LGBTQ uh, community. Acabo vendo ali a art and activism. Eu vi que isso era uma forma de fazer arte e ativismo, simplesmente contando histórias. I saw that this was my way of doing art and activism at the same time, simply by sharing these stories. Cisinha, your play. Um, é, essa, um, uh, essa peça ela faz parte de uma trilogia encenada pela Companhia Os Crespos que investiga a afetividade entre as pessoas negras. This play is part of a trilogy by Os Crespos that um, investigates the af afetividade. Mm. Af I think it's like affection. Affection. Like relationship. Relationship the black community in the black, black community. Black yeah. E então há um objetivo também de formação de público é, junto, junto à comunidade negra. So we end up building a community and a, a public um, together with the black community. Yeah, with the objective of. Do you have a mic? Do you want a mic? No, no. I just want to say yeah. that, like, with the objective. Of Creating a black an audience of black members in the yeah. within the Isso. black community. E a peça ela vem sendo apresentada desde 2013, uh, com em diferentes, principalmente em São Paulo, mas tem ido em alguns lugares, outras cidades do Brasil também. E a receptividade tem sido muito boa, principalmente uh, entre a população jovem negra. The play has been produced has been produced. Um, consecutively since 2013 and has had um, a very uh, good um, acceptability and uh, relatability, especially within the um, younger community. Uh, yeah, and uh, Ana Maria, you're maybe not this, but you wrote also other plays, so how is the reception of your, your writing, your thinking, your um, dissecting of these relations? How, how, what, okay. what do audiences think? Uh, <laughs> I wrote last year, and after that I had written two more, but anyone, uh, uh, none of them had been uh, um, played yet in, in here. I had already some readings in Salvador and Rio de Janeiro, and I also see that it's, um, my idea comes from the, the necessity that I see and that uh, Cidinha has already said. Uh, to so that we can have um, characters with uh, uh, deep uh, psychologically deep for black actors in Brazil. 
Okay, I think we have, um, as you can see, for example, on television, uh, we have only uh, black uh, actors and actresses playing uh, secondary papers, secondary roles there, and we see characters who, who doesn't really have uh, meaning uh, for the story. And I think this is what moves me to write for theater, okay? So we have so many wonderful um, artists here just waiting for an opportunity to show their work. I think that, uh, like Viola said in the, the Emmy last year, okay? Uh, we are good, we are very good. We just need some opportunity. We just need uh, people writing for us and thinking about us and not creating stereotypes or and not in, uh, don't knowing how to deal with problems that are specific to the black community. Mm -hmm. Then um, this readings have been showing me that I think we, I am in the right way. So that's what moves me. That's what I want to continue to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I'm sure you're... Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I'm sure your, your plays will find an audience uh, nationally <laughs> and internationally, I'm uh, very much so. Um, and, it's, and it's also very important for us to be there with you today so that you can show that in Brazil you are not talking only about football or samba <laughs> or caipirinha. Okay, we are talking about uh, yeah. problems that can relate to, to, to people all over the world. So thank you for this too. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, yeah. And theater, if theater is something great, it is because it is a model, and if something happens on stage and some people talk and understand, it could happen in life. People can talk, say it happens there. That's why some people don't like to see things <laughs> on the stage. But uh, maybe before we come to the future of plans of your collective, one, one last question from the audience. Good job, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so this question is for uh, Cinda? Cidinha. Cidinha. Say it again? Yeah. Yeah, Cidinha. Um, <clears throat> listening to your work, this is a very personal question. Not very personal. <laughs> um, I wanted to know if your content around the... <clears throat> the um, African diaspora or the black woman, if that's something that you have always, as an artist, was that your natural sensibility within your, your text, in your work, or is it, is it more of a focus? Like, is it a spiritual thing? Just, just, just for myself, like just as an artist, I noticed, like listening to your characters and um, the experiences. Should you, you? I think she. No. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> listening to the experiences Funny. of people of African descent, they are the same everywhere in every country. So I wanted to know if your you, the the blood of your work is more something you can't escape from, it naturally comes, or it's like, this is what I wanna do, this is important to me. Is it more head, or is it more heart? heart. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's a tough one. Bom, eu penso que as duas coisas se juntam. É importante dizer que esse trabalho foi um trabalho feito por encomenda. I think it's both of them together in a way, but it's important to say that this work was, um, uh, <laughs> uh, commissioned, commissioned, thank you. Isso. Uh, o grupo pediu para que eu uh, o escrevesse. The group asked me to write this play. E, mas se eu for, pense, for responder a partir do, do, também do meu trabalho como, como escritora, né, dos meus livros... But if I'm going to answer as um, the writer of several books and all of, as all of my plays... A ser uma mulher negra é algo que me inscreve no mundo, me define, define meu lugar no mundo. Being a black woman defines my place in the world. E a partir desse lugar, eu falo sobre toda e qualquer coisa que me interesse, 
com o tom, o ritmo, a emoção ou a racionalidade que mais me interessa no momento. And from that place, I speak of whatever interests me, with the tone, the rhythm, the uh, fire, and everything, the rationality, and... It's good, thank you. So to the future, what's, uh, what's, what's the, tell us a little bit, I may be coming to the end, but tell us a little bit about your collective, when did it start? We're all going to go to Brazil. Yes. <laughs> what's the idea? What's, uh, how old is it? How, what are you doing now? And what you're oh, planning so to do? Old. Our collective is so old, like three months, I think. Really? Um, yeah? Three yes, months? Yes, three months. We started like July 31st. 31st. So this yeah. is a little bit of birthing. Uh, yes, uh, yes. yes. July 11th. So I think like for the next year, we definitely want to do a full production. <laughs> We've been talking about like writing plays for us. Someone said something about that. Um, but we, yeah, uh, we definitely want to do more readings because I think it's like a good start like to get like the artists to come. Uh, we want to do full production productions and we want to do short films and whatever we can to like do this in like different uh, medias. And I think um, it's important for us to kind of uh, bring, you know, Brazilian artists in, in with us, but also kind of work in, in, in the American scenario and work with American artists. And work working with Tia, I think, was very important to us because we needed to kind of, you know, bridge that, that world and not bring these Brazilian texts that were translated by us as well. Um, yes. And we, w you know, we, w that's super important to us. Um, so, yeah. I, I also want to say that um, it is so hard to be an artist. It really is. And it's so hard to make this. You know, it's, it's really not easy. And you see these wonderful women, like we are all together in this. And thank you, Tia. And I really want to thank from my heart, like every single actor, artist who worked with us, because it's a struggle. It's an everyday struggle. Within like the need of putting out there and the need to create this to do it and surviving, you know. <laughs> so thank you, Frank. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, and oh. thank you, the Seagull, it's an honor. It's for an giving honor. us thank this you. opportunity. Well, I uh, I think maybe then it is a good uh, uh, cause to celebrate and uh, to go to the reception. It is in here. It's on 36th, I think, right? 35th. You come out and just make a ride. And I think Anna Maria will watch with white headphones. <laughs> she will watch the reception uh, and what we are drinking and what we talk about and maybe give us some comments, right? We and uh, so we will have a reception now. And I hope you follow us on Skype when we have a beer and a wine. But thank again, thank you. Um, thank you, Anna. Thank, thank you all you. for coming and another applause for this. Thank great you so ensemble. much. Thank you. Love you. I love you. We, we just have a few thank yous as, yeah. as the collective. Um, we wanted to thank, thank the playwrights for coming all this way. They all came from Brazil and it's, it's you know, it's a 10 hour flight and it's living in close quarters and it's, it's, It means a lot to us, and so thank you so much for being here, and Frank, we cannot thank you enough for giving us this space, and these artists, and... Um, thank you, Anna. And Frank, that was Thank you. Frank. Thank you. Frank. Thank you. Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Anna, we have a flower for you here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And, and to Tia. our wonderful director. Tia. Yes. Could never have done this without you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you.